Okay, hi there, and here we go with test three in our 2019 series, The Edge in Economics Provision. We take a broad topic and we ask five multiple choice questions to give you a chance to, ch to check and test and improve your understanding. This short test is on government intervention in markets. Here are five questions. Whenever you're ready, just press the pause button and then press play when you want to go through the answer together. Question number one, the private company employs or operates a coal mine which employs 400 workers. The mining operations have polluted the environment, created some external costs. If the government intervenes, how could it internalise the externality? Have a go, please, at question number one. So intervention designed specifically to internalise the externality. What's the right answer to question one? It is D. Internalising the externality means that the polluter pays for the external costs created. The, the mining operations create that divergence between social and private cost to external costs. The right answer is therefore D. A tax increases the marginal private cost for the mines and these will contract in output, hopefully towards a social optimum where social benefit and social cost are equated. Here's question number two. Transport economists estimate the price elasticity demand for private car use is very low. The question is what would be the most effective way of reducing traffic congestion? Have a go please at question number two. Okay, the right answer to question two is A. Banning cars and lawyers from town centres would be the most effective way. Very low price elasticity suggests that the drivers, the users of these vehicles, they don't consider things like bicycles, public transport, they don't consider them as alternative close forms of uh, alternative transport, close substitutes. If you subsidise bicycles, if you subsidise public transport, the impact will be relatively uh, low because the demand is inelastic. The most effective policy, if you want to target congestion, is to ban cars, but perhaps on certain days or at certain times, that intervention would have a bigger effect uh, compared to a subsidy or um, road pricing. Question number three is coming up. Here it is. A reason for government intervention is to attempt to correct for market failure. Sometimes though government failure may occur. What is not a possible reason for government failure? Here's a chance to have a go at question number three. Okay, what did you get for question three? The answer is B. Government failure occurs when an intervention, often done with the best of intentions, either is ineffective, doesn't work, or it creates second, third round problems that can deepen the existing market failures. Well, options A, C and D do describe the potential drawbacks or the limitations of government intervention. So they are possible government failures. B, though, implies a successful form of intervention. For example, they might use a carbon tax or some other pollution tax to reduce negative externalities. There's no hint of government failure in option B. Two more questions to go on intervention. Here's question number four. A country introduces a national minimum wage of $10 per hour. In which industry, A, B, C or D, is the minimum wage likely to cause the most unemployment. Have a go please at question number four. And the right answer is A. Three reasons. First of all, it's the industry where the minimum wage will be a higher, the highest relative to uh, relative to beforehand. So in industries A and B, it will be a two dollar per hour increase, a significant pay floor. Secondly, we're told that the in industry A, the wage elasticity of demand for labour is greater than one. In other words, it's wage elastic. So you'd expect to see quite a big contraction in employment. And the wage elasticity of supply is greater than one. Therefore, you'd attract more workers into the industry. So in industry A, you'd be more likely to get a big excess supply of labour. Hence, the most unemployment. One more question. Here we go. Under which circumstances will a subsidy from the government be most beneficial 
if there are externalities from producing good X. Have a go please at question number five. Okay, what do we think for the last question? We're looking for uh, when will a subsidy have the most beneficial effect if there are externalities? Well, the answer to question five is D. We're looking for positive externalities in the first place. That's the reason for the subsidy, to encourage an increase in output of um, something that generates positive externalities. And then we're looking for the biggest change in demand. If you subsidise, that's likely to be when the price elasticity of demand is more than one, i.e. demand is price elastic. So the expansion of demand will be greatest if the coefficient is more than one. Hence, the answer is D. Okay, thanks for joining in. Test three.